Um, so thank you to Dr. DeMaio for inviting me to speak and to the National Pancreas uh, Foundation for uh, sponsoring the day. I am the last speaker, and I promise to be brief. Um, but I did want to talk about just uh, three innovations in surgical treatment for pancreatic cancer um, that are exciting and uh, maybe sort of a good tone to wrap up uh, the day with. I'm going to cover the role of laparoscopy and robotics in pancreatic surgery. I'm going to talk about irreversible electroporation, which is something new that we've uh, been doing here at Mount Sinai. And then I'm going to talk about something that we don't do yet, but that is interesting and um, that we are considering starting a trial for here, which is hepatic arterial infusion uh, chemotherapy. So laparoscopy. Uh, just to cover the basics, laparoscopy is where instead of using a traditional open incision to operate, we use tiny incisions insufflate the abdomen with carbon dioxide and then do the operation on the inside of the abdomen, basically we say sort of using these chopsticks uh, on the inside. So it is technically more difficult, however it spares the patient the potential complications of an incision. So as I was describing, we have to insufflate the abdomen to have room to work and then we all uh, watch the procedure through a camera that's placed in the middle here and we watch the procedure on a monitor and we see on the inside uh, uh, how we're performing the procedure. Uh, there are a lot of potential benefits to laparoscopy, uh, but since the surgeries that we perform for pancreatic cancer tend to be very complicated and very technical, its role has been limited. Um, robotics expands upon the idea of laparoscopic surgery. It is a laparoscopic surgery, but it takes it one step further, where instead of operating with those thin, long instruments that uh, I showed you, uh, there's actually a robot uh, here with uh, several arms that, are, that have multiple joints that allow us to perform even more facile maneuvers because there are joints and these arms can move in ways that the human hand can't move. Um, I do want to point out that the, surg the surgery is still performed by a surgeon um, who is seated at a console uh, in the room, although you know the, the future of robotic surgery is that this console could be located anywhere in the world, and so um, there are actually, there have been some surgeries that have been performed um, with the surgeon in a different country, et cetera. So um, there are advantages advantages and disadvantages to robotic surgery. Um, for one, it really increases the cost of the procedure, as you can see, because of all the technology involved. Its role in pancreatic surgery has remained fairly limited so far, but the role of laparoscopy in general uh, is growing, and I wanted to talk about how we here at Sinai use laparoscopy. Uh, there are sort of three different levels of laparoscopic surgery. The first is a completely laparoscopic operation, and this is how we actually routinely perform most of our distal pancreatectomies. The body and tail of the pancreas is a little bit um, of an easier uh, location to perform surgery because it's a little further away from the major blood vessels that other speakers have shown you. Uh, and for most cases where the tumor is uh, surgically resectable without having to do a major vascular repair, we attempt to do these laparoscopically. Then, uh, if, even if that, even if we can't perform a completely laparoscopic operation, what we'll often do is what we call a laparoscopic assisted operation. And this can involve mobilization of, of structures, um, so that we can maybe reduce the size of the incision that's ultimately required. Um, one sort of bridge between these two procedures is that we can do what's called a, uh, we can use what's called a hand port, where we make an incision that's about the size of, well, in my case, this is why I, I think female pancreatic surgeons are really at an advantage, because we tend to have smaller hands, therefore smaller hand ports. And we can use really a tiny incision where we actually put a hand inside, still watching the procedure on the monitor, um, and can help, um, uh, like I said, avoid the larger uh, incision uh, when possible. And, and even if we know that this is going to be a difficult operation where we need many hands in the field, we still advocate the use of laparoscopy when beginning surgery just to look for metastatic disease. Uh, if you remember, Dr. Uh, Labo showed the one picture where there were these tiny little white spots on the uh, peritoneal lining that, show, that demonstrate that that patient unfortunately did have metastatic disease. Those tiny flecks are impossible to see on a CAT scan, and we, uh, despite you know rigorous um, research in the field, still do not have an imaging test that will show us metastatic disease that's that small, and the only way to detect it is with a laparoscopy. So even if we are planning for an open surgery, we always start with a laparoscopy to see if there is any sign of carcinomatosis, those tiny uh, dots, so that we don't have to make a whole incision only to realize that the surgery would not help the patient. Um, and this way we can, um, at the very least, spare the patient um, the, the pain of recovering from an incision. So we do use laparoscopy quite extensively. 
next, I wanted to talk about uh, a new technology called irreversible electroporation. Uh, the interesting thing uh, about pancreatic cancer is that even when it has not spread to other organs, it is often not surgically removable because of the intimate relationship that the pancreas has with these major blood vessels. And so oftentimes we'll have a tumor that is um, uh, located, like I said, uh, in the head uh, or the neck of the pancreas that is pressing upon one of these major vessels. And oftentimes we, uh, we will... Uh, perform surgery to remove the tumor uh, and then ultimately find out on the path report that actually that margin is microscopically positive. Even though we thought looking at the CAT scan that we would be able to remove 100% of the tumor microscopically, we did leave cells behind. And obviously that uh, increases the chance of this tumor coming back um, pretty drastically. So there has been the development of this new technology which basically uh, uses an electrical pulse through the tumor to destroy much of the tumor. But because it is not using heat, um, uh, it is safe to use near major blood vessels. And what we've been doing here is, um, um, oh, let me first describe to you how we actually do it. We use it's a, this machine which generates the electrical pulse, and there are these long metal probes that we insert under, under vision at the time of surgery directly into the tumor, and then we actually watch the electrical pulses go through the tumor, um, and, and we can actually see if we're uh, changing the conductivity of the tumor, which tells us that we are, in fact, um, physically uh, destroying the tissue. And what we've been doing is mostly we've been using this as an adjunct to the Whipple operation, where we go ahead and do the irreversible electroporation at the time of surgery just prior to the actual resection, and then we go ahead with the resection. And that way, even if we do leave cells behind on these vessels, uh, and there's no way we can know this because on the path report, all we have is a specimen that we've removed. We, don't actually, we obviously don't remove what's, what's left behind, but at least we believe hypothetically that the irreversible electroporation has destroyed even the cells that we've left behind. Um, so this is a very new uh, topic. Obviously, we wanted to talk about innovations today. So this is one where we are still building up our data on this, um, but there is little downside to it. And so we've been doing it in patients where we, where we worry that we might be leaving behind some cells. Uh, and lastly, really sort of forging into uncharted territory, one thing that we're um, uh, looking into here is the idea of using hepatic arterial infusion as an adjunct uh, to surgery. So as you've heard from uh, the other speakers, the oftentimes, even when a patient appears to have non-metastatic disease, the metastases are there and we just don't see them yet. So we call this micrometastatic disease. For the pancreas, as for all of the GI tract, um, these cells that break away from the tumor travel through this venous system and go into the liver first. And the liver is actually sort of like a filter. All the blood from the GI system has to go through the liver to the heart, and actually the heart is over here, before it can re-enter the systemic circulation. So for all these organs, including the pancreas, the first site of metastatic disease is typically the liver because the liver sees this blood draining out of the tumor first. And so the liver is often the site of metastatic disease that we don't see, but then after the Whipple operation uh, or after the, the pancreatectomy, uh, a year later, two years later, uh, we see liver metastases. And although it boggles the mind a little bit to think about it, those cells must have been present that whole time, um, but just were lying dormant or for whatever reason weren't growing into visible cells, uh, visible masses. And then um, a year or two down the road, these metastases develop. So what can we do uh, at the time of surgery to help uh, prevent or to treat that micrometastatic disease that we highly suspect is there but we can't see? And so um, one thing that's been done in other cancers, and we're exploring the use of it in pancreatic cancer, is to, at the time of surgery, uh, implant what's called a hepatic arterial infusion pump. It's a pump sort of like a portacath, if you're familiar with that device that gets placed uh, in the vein to treat other uh, types of cancers. This is a, a, a pump device. It's about you know, the size of um, a hockey puck. It's, it's pretty large. Um, to accommodate the chemotherapy that we give. It gets placed um, underneath the skin and the abdomen, and then it gets connected to the hepatic artery up here. And what we can use this for is to deliver chemotherapy directly to the liver. And uh, we can administer much higher doses of chemotherapy because it is going to the liver directly, and it therefore bypasses the rest of the body for the most part. And so the patient doesn't have to um, experience the side effects of systemic chemotherapy, and so we can give much higher doses than usual. Now, 
Um, obviously, I, I was charged to speak about innovations, and so it's important to say that there, uh, we still don't have any evidence for pancreatic cancer that this works, but it is FDA-approved and is in use for other types of cancers that tend to spread to the liver, uh, notably colon cancer. Um, and so this is one of the things that we're exploring here. Uh, we are uh, applying for a grant, and uh, we'll let you know. We'll keep you posted if this is something that ends up coming through. So uh, that's it. If anybody has any questions, um, feel free to email me or...